Hello and welcome to Friday Double Bill. This is Mayank Shekhar and I'm Fahad Samar. Each week, we analyze and evaluate the latest releases from Bollywood and Hollywood so that you can make a more informed choice at the movies. Well, this is our maiden episode on NETV Prime. As it turns out, Bollywood has decided not to release any film this weekend. Uh, is it because our shows just started on TV? You know, trust me on this, we're quite deluded enough to believe so. <laughs> I don't think so. This is the, this is the hangover of kick. Right. The, the juggernaut that is Salman Khan rolling along. Nobody has the guts a week later also to release films. Well, yeah, absolutely. As it turns out, all film cultures have festival films. Those are supposed to be primarily art house movies or parallel cinema movies. In India, we have so many festivals that there is a Dasara release, there's a Diwali release, there's a Pongal release, there's a Christmas release, and there's an Eid release, which regardless of who stars in it, if it's Shah Rukh Khan in 2013, it becomes a huge hit. If it's Salman Khan in 2014, it's a huge hit. So coming up, Tonight is the re-review of Salman Khan's kick. There's also the review of the Scarlett Johansson starrer Lucy and there's trailer talk of Mericom. So let's kick off the proceedings with our review of kick, that Salman Khan blockbuster. The film Kick, directed by producer turned director Sajid Nadiadwala, is a huge, big budget action film about a guy called Devi Lal whose ambition in life is to get kicks out of it. By kick, we mean an adrenaline rush. In pursuit of this goal, Devi Lal turns into the superhero devil who robs from the rich while a cop chases him all along. Randeep Huda plays that cop. Devil is a Robin Hood sort of character. The villain is played by Nawazuddin Siddiqui. No prizes for guessing who plays Devi Lal or Devil. That's Salman Khan, of course, and as usual, he plays himself. Now, if you, as an audience, are willing to suspend all disbelief, all logic, all reason, and surrender <laughs> to the mystique of Salman Khan, then you may just have a good time watching this film. But if you're a little more discerning, it's going to be a tough haul sitting through that film. Having said that, I must say, any Salman Khan film epitomizes his philosophy of life, that it is not just enough to be human, but to be superhuman, <laughs> wouldn't you say? Well, you know, let's try and be discerning for a change. And let's look for a plot if there is one. And if you're really looking for a plot, what you'll really find is Dhoom 3 all over again. There is devil instead of Amir Khan's clown. The devil informs the cops. In this case, it happens to be Randeep Hoda instead of Abhishek Bachchan and the other one, Uday Chopra. And clearly, what he's doing is what Amir was doing in the previous film. So has Sajid Nadiadwala or Salman Khan not seen Doom 3? And of course, because it's a Salman film and there are certain factors that you need to bear in mind because there's so many of his bhai bhakts or bhai tards or bhai sexuals, as it were, who are in the theater. They try and do as many things possible to make them happy. And this is one of those rare movies where after everything is over, the full-on climax is done, we go back to a flashback. You know, we go back to a whole new story where we see Bhaijan as the Robin Hood. I think this is fabulous Salman Khan filmmaking that only Salman Khan knows better. Please, please understand Mayank as far as Bhaijan is concerned. <laughs> there is no question he may look like the devil, but we all know in our hearts that Salman Khan is the absolute, absolute angel, that he is the savior of thousands of destitute children who are dying of all kinds of debilitating diseases. He has the police force of several countries after he's him. He's ambidextrous. He is ambidextrous. He's omnipotent. He has... When he's a child, he could, he could jump off 100 feet into the swimming pool. <laughs> ride a bicycle in reverse. He could do pretty much whatever right. it is. Well, and by that token, this is what I meant when I said being superhuman. <laughs> it's not enough to be human. Totally. You know, I think at this point, all of us are aware of the fact that Salman Khan or Salman, uh, as it were, is Spider-Man and Superman combined and far more. Uh, and this is really has a lot to do with how we consume mass entertainment in this country. I think it's a lot like organized religion that way. You know, it doesn't matter what happens or what's the thought behind it. So long as there's personal feeling involved, there's personal faith involved, there's collective feeling involved. I think a lot of Salman Khan fans are a lot like Sachin Bhakts in, in some form. It's just the same way. They don't care too much about the film. It's sort of like Sachin Bhakts are huge connoisseurs of cricket as well. So at some level, it really becomes about the fan rather than the film. 
Absolutely. In fact, the whole process of watching a film like Kick is to submit yourself to the experience, go to a single screen cinema hall if possible, and just allow that complete sensory overload. Well, look to at the fans instead of the film, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we watched this as front benchers, uh, first day, first show, and man, was it a trip. <laughs> a complete trip was or perhaps it a trip? was it a kick <laughs> it was a kick in the you know where uh, but but having said that uh, it is to be experienced uh, at least once in a lifetime well now we're getting on to the omg or the oh my god moments from this film omg moments is where we look at some of the best scenes or the worst scenes according to us the ultimate omg as far as this film is concerned is the fact that there are four screenwriters credited with the screenplay, including the maestro himself, Chetan Bhagat. And I was wondering where, what, how became of that well, elusive you know, screenplay. I really want to know which of these four writers came up with the key twist in the plot, which is the fact that the cop, that Randeep Huda, gets to know that the devil, that Salman Khan, is in Warsaw. And the reason he, he realizes this is because Salman Khan has a conversation with Randeep Huda and he tells him, loser, you are a loser, <laughs> you are a loser. And then Randeep Huda does his serious mathematics to figure out that LO stands for LO and SER is actually a number and this is a flight that's going to Poland in Warsaw and therefore <laughs> that's where he should find Salman Khan. I think it's a master stroke by four master writers in Bollywood at this point. You're worried about Warsaw and Poland. There's a point in this film where Salman Khan escapes by jumping out of a, a very tall building, swoops down, and then commandeers a red double-decker bus, which are, is only found in London. And just in case there was any doubt that we have suddenly jump cut in a, in a matter of a second from Poland <laughs> to London, the double-decker bus says the number 10 King's Cross. King's Cross. <laughs> At which point there is no doubt. So, Maestro Sajid Nadiadwala, I know this is your debut film, but a little more attention to detail, shall we? Well, getting on to the second OMG moment, and here we also look at positive aspects of the film. I know what your positive aspect was, and we've had this discussion before coming here, but mine was Nawazuddin Siddiqui. Here is this guy who appears for all of four or five scenes in the movie. One or two of them are opposite Salman Khan, and immediately you get a sense, of course, you know, his performance is just pitched as high as the rest of the movie, but you get a sense that if your mainstream actors or your mainstream superstars were also great actors, like Nawaz, even an intolerable film like this with a completely insipid script can seem far more tolerable to people who are not fans of that superhero or the superstar as it were. I think he just kills it in those four or five moments. He appears as the villain of the movie. Well, not just Nawazuddin, but Jacqueline, I think, did a remarkable job. Uh, she moves, uh, uh, you know, like J-Lo, and it was, it was terrific to see her in, in crackling form. She emoted as best she could or uh, is expected of her. So again, this is somebody who's gotten a remarkable opportunity, and she's uh, bitten the bait, gone for it and uh, you know makes this film uh, slightly more tolerable than it actually is well you know this is the kind of discussion that you end up having with a salman khan film that jacqueline fernandez dances really well or perhaps nargis pakri does his dance as well or that single shot where nargis pakri and salman khan are together salman khan looks way too chotu or did salman khan take his shirt off apparently it does not in the movie i mean come on man we have really degenerated in our conversation and that's got to do a lot with the film that we've just watched, which gave us a kick somewhere else. <laughs> so let's get to the verdict of kick. Is it a dekho or a peko? Well, most of the Salman Khan fans have clearly already watched the film. It's already done a 100 crore plus business. Those who haven't, if you're looking for a review, as you saw the kind of conversations we've had about the movie, clearly don't go looking for a review because there's going to be none. I've always believed that reviewing or evaluating or rating a Salman movie, especially after Wanted, which was in 2009, is more like ironing a pair of jeans or in this case, ironing underwear. Really, what is the point? Why bother, right? But uh, given that you can still watch it for the tribal experience or the tourism experience, in a single screen cinema, watching bhakts or bhai tards watch their bhai, uh, that in itself can be quite interesting. But hey, as a film, this is a complete fake for me. I've decided you have to submit to the Salman Khan experience. Go and watch it in the theaters. Let him wash over you. 
come back cleansed and purified and just have a rollicking good time. Well, you just heard what we had to say about the film. Now let's find out what the Desi Martini audience has to say. Kick is rated 3.2 out of 5 stars by more than 2,000 reviewers. Some of the movie jockeys on Desi Martini say Kick is the best looking average Salman Khan film. Kick is a Salman entertainer out and out, worth a watch. The review goes on to say, in Kick, Salu does with perfection what he's best at doing, being himself. Well, that was the review of Kick. Coming up is the Hollywood release of the weekend. What happened? What did you do to my stomach? From La Femme Nakita to The Fifth Element, writer-director Luc Besson has presented some tough female action heroes in his films. Now, Besson directs Scarlett Johansson in Lucy, an action thriller come pop philosophy treaties that tracks a woman accidentally caught in a drug deal who turns the tables on her captors and transforms into a merciless warrior evolved beyond human logic by optimizing 100% of her brain potential. Well, I distinctly remember exactly where I was or what I was doing when I first watched La Femme Nikita. This was in the early 90s. The movie hit me like a rod in the head. I genuinely felt, and a lot of people I'm sure felt the same, that this was Quentin Tarantino of Europe. Over a period of time, Fahad, uh, clearly he's degenerated uh, into Ram Gopal Verma of France, uh, having made about 130 to 140 films. But I genuinely believe that this film in 2014, so many years after La Femme Nikita, it might have redeemed him. Uh, I don't know what you felt about the movie, but I was quite stunned by an action film that also looks at a certain philosophical, pseudo-scientific basis, and it's almost fun all the way. You know, I couldn't agree with you less. <laughs> this is pseudo, certainly, pseudo-intellectual, pseudo-scientific, pseudo-French cinema at its worst. I thought it was so pretentious. This is a man who has clearly just dabbled in so much, uh, uh, you know, Drugs, stuff. maybe. <laughs> Possibly. The fact that this is, this is not even an original premise. I mean, we've seen this. This is The Matrix meets Limitless meets 2001, A Space Odyssey. It even, you know, meets another Scarlett Johansson film, Beneath the Skin. So this is just a merry mess as far as I'm concerned. I want to be charitable to this kind of cinema, but I'm sorry. This is just so self-indulgent. I have little time for Monsieur, Monsieur Bisson and his, his antics. Uh, well, I have enough time for Besson for various reasons. One is the genre he's dealing with. It's something that really excites me as a movie goer. It's the opposite of Femme Jep or Female in Jeopardy. You know, Female in Jeopardy is that genre where a woman really goes through hell throughout the film and then eventually she gets some sort of revenge or extracts some sort of revenge uh, by the end of the story. You know, Madhur Bhandarkar would be the patron saint of Femme Jep genre in Bollywood. Uh, this is more Kill Bill in the sense of here's Scarlett Johansson who's just taking on the world with her brain power going up with every few minutes. Um, of course, the premise that we use 10% of our brains is obviously a myth since, you know, we all use 100% of our brains. It's just that we don't care too much about how we use it. But uh, I well, just felt... maybe, maybe not. Maybe <laughs> not. Maybe we don't. I think the problem, again, I'm sorry to have interrupted you, but I thought, you know, the problem with Luc Besson is that he's, again, been slotted. He's one of those pioneers of what they call the French uh, cinema de look. Right. You know, these are people, the French uh, uh, authors, who are all style, no substance, low on content, and I'm afraid this is a film that I thought just fell right into that abyss. You know, Lucy is the missing link between apes and humans in anthropology. And this film really is neither man nor beast. I think it just falls staggeringly in the middle into this quagmire of a film. How about falling right in the middle of clever and exciting, but for the last 30 minutes where they just go completely bonkers. But I think until that last 30 minutes, I was having a ball and my expectations were very low, but there's Scarlett Johansson to take it all up from there. And it was enjoyable. This is a man, this is a man who gave <laughs> kick a peko. Yeah. And totally. he's now exulting in Monsieur Besson's... There's a big difference between Salman Khan <laughs> and Scarlett Johansson, in my eyes, for sure. <laughs> Salman Khan is being human. Salman pa Khan is being superhuman. Scarlett Johansson is being is Rajnikant. Being no, she's being Rajnikant. She can shoot through doors and assassinate a bunch of assassins. 
She can go through all kinds of things. She has achieved a cosmic oneness with the universe. She is disintegrating at some point. Uh, and then, you know, the drugs uh, bring her back. It is just outrageous, this film. I cannot emphasize enough. Well, since we're getting into details, it's time for the OMG moments of Scarlett Johansson starer, Lucy. Well, Fahad, I think you already started with the OMG moments of the film, and that's precisely the stuff that Scarlett Johansson's character can do because her brain power is increasing. And I like that whole video game thing going. It's a reverse of a video game, actually, because as the brain power keeps going up, usually in a video game, you lose ammunition. It keeps going up and reaches 100%. And you're just wondering, yo, what are the things that she can't do? And that's really what makes this film only about OMG moments beyond a point. I love the fact that she can get on television because uh, she can get, she can, you know, track electromagnetic waves. That means she can get on telephone, uh, she can read your mind, she can read your body. And I think my favorite OMG moment from that would be the point where she reaches these cops and she just lifts them up. The cops are right there on the ceiling, hanging from the top with, the, with guns pointing downwards. I think uh, this is, this is perfection when it comes to 100% brain power because she can also feel the rotation of the earth and gravity. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Yes, and you're, you're, you're citing this as something worthy of, uh, of, of a great filmmaker. Listen, at one point she's disintegrating. She's falling apart inside and she locks herself into an airplane bathroom. And you have the entire crew pounding away asking her to open up when everyone knows it takes one second for the crew to open a, a door. So you have these kind of outrageous cinematic licenses uh, in a, already an outrageous film. And I'm just wondering, this is, you know, by, 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 by comparison, Kick was a masterpiece. Coming on to other OMG moments of the film, I think one negative has got to be Morgan Freeman. It's been a while. I think some director needs to give him a role which is in the same ghisa pitta, serious man who's giving gyan to the world. Though looking at the positive, I love the music of this film. Eric Senna, who's collaborated with Besson over, you know, over many, many years. All his films, every single film. Every sing single film of his. I mean, I sat through the entire closing credits because I love the music so much. Very music video kind of music, uh, like the film, is a bit like a video game as well. It is, and it has the IQ of a video game. It is exactly at that level, so I'm afraid. There's one moment in the movie where she's get, she, she gets a doctor to operate on her and remove a, a packet of drugs that has been uh, sewn into her stomach, and she calls her mother, and she talks to her mother. It's a tender moment of humanity where she recalls not only just suckling her mother's milk, but also going back to the womb. And I thought that was one tender moment of humanity before she ceases to be human and becomes superhuman. Well, as far as the movie verdict for Lucy goes, you know, it's a big toss-up for me for watching it on television, consuming certain illegal substances and enjoying yourself, especially the last 30 minutes, because by that point you wouldn't care. Uh, but that is illegal. So I'll go with Theatre Pedeco and, and watch it for the fun that the movie is. Well, that's very, very, very interesting. But if you will indulge me, I'd like to read out a little quote from Besson. He says, cinema never saved anyone's life. It's not medicine that will save anyone's life. It is only an aspirin. Well, I certainly needed two aspirins after seeing this film. It's a full-on peco as far as I'm concerned. Well, aspirin for you. Good fun for me. That was the review of Lucy. Coming up now is the trailer talk of Mary Com. This film may just as well be called Mar Mary Mar. It's wonderful that a biopic is being made about this living legend who's probably been an inspiration to so many of girls out there, not just to pick up boxing gloves, but just to stand up for themselves and to say that if you have a vision and a dream, you can probably aspire it and go for gold. 
Well, Mar, Mary, Mar. Well, that's a that's a possible headline when the film comes out. But so far as the promo is concerned, I think it's a very average promo purely because it tells you so much about the story. It's almost the entire film in about two minutes with only the climax missing, which is not a bad thing because that's a story that we all want to hear. That's a story that we all want to watch. There's Priyanka Chopra playing the lead role and that's a role that's really written for critical acclaim. What do you think, Fahad? Absolutely. And I think as a uh, debutant director, Omang Kumar, who has hitherto just done production design uh, for him to take up this film and to make it uh, it's looking good uh, it's looking like a glossy Bansali film at the same time it's got grit it's got substance I, I, I have huge expectations from this film well everybody has huge expectations of film I really hope the debutant director sort of lives up to the expectations here is a story that's still being told in some form because she's a practicing sports person Mary Com. but I'd love to know what Mary Com has to say about this film actually well uh, it's as you said it's a work in progress and that is why you can always have a sequel that's what sequels are meant to be not just all these various things that we are used to in Bollywood but this time round maybe she'll go for gold all over again well let's hope that Mary Com delivers a knockout at the box office well that's all we have for you this week on Friday Double Bill as you can see widely diverging opinions Dekos and Pekos well I'm sure there are even far more opinions out there do give us your feedback and don't forget to come back to the show where hopefully we'll be reviewing better movies next weekend